Well, hello there. This is Shiva, and this is episode three of Pin Builder plus FP equals whatever. It's whatever we come up with. There's really no set design now. Uh, anyway, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping first, and I just need to correct a few things. One, I had said that there was no ability to move multiple objects in Pin Builder, and that was wrong. There is a way. Unfortunately, it's done to, it's kind of a lot of work for what it actually does. Uh, you need to name every object uh, with a unique name, and then you need to type it into a group uh, file. And I'm not too sure how it works. I don't know if you can move things individually, if you, um, or if it's the entire group. And uh, I still prefer FP because we can select uh, one item. We can select uh, a small group of items, like so. And then we can just, uh, or, or quite literally, just move the entire group if we really wanted to with the layers, right? And by the way, to do a layer command, if you don't know how to do how to assign something to a layer, just right click, uh, well, uh, on the object and just go assign to, and then just select your layer. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't see why Pin Builder can do the exact same thing. You know, it, this is just way, way, way sim simpler. And unfortunately, Pin Builder it just seems to be overly complex in certain things. Uh, it's kind of unnecessary when it's just so much simpler to do it uh, uh, certain ways. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be fixing that. But, so what are we going to be doing here? Ah, uh, well, oh yeah, correcting mistakes. Talking about a mistake, I had uh, made a mistake with my sizes. And this is a real good case of me not recording at two o'clock in the morning. And then on top of it, I'm kind of overwhelmed overwhelmed with having to look after my family and especially with my dad passing away a couple of weeks back and then having to deal with all of the financials and government and stuff like that so i'm just like kind of you know a little having some problems with being able to handle everything um but this is from pinballmakers.com and these guys, they kind of built their own arcade pinball tables from scratch. So, yeah, it, accuracy with them is incredibly important. And here's the sizes. And I have confirmed this from uh, industry sources and other industry websites like Classic Playfields and everything else. Uh, EM, 41 is 20.25 by 41 inches. Um, as a reference, Pin Builder, uh, two of the tables, they're basically 20 by 40. Uh, so, yeah, I was kind of wondering why even with uh, EM that scaled properly in Pin Builder, why it just seemed as if things were a little flattened. Well, the lights were just, they went perfectly uh, round like you see with uh, lens lights. They had a, they were slightly over. Yeah, so that's the reason why. And um, in fact, uh, around about, this would be around about 1978, this is the size that was used pretty much by most of the American manufacturers, uh, well, until now, I believe Stern still does that. Uh, yep, the standard ride body, which is, list, uh, even today, is 20.25 by 42 inches. And unfortunately, we don't have that. And that's the reason why I've been struggling with firepower, because I've literally lost two inches in in terms of the vertical which is from top to bottom and i've been having a hard time trying to fit everything in there that i that i can and well that's because i uh, you know that two inches boy that would have made a big difference eh uh especially to what i was saying before and the things that i could not do because i just didn't have the room and it's kind of a shame but you know it's something that i guess we're just going to have to uh get used to if we want to work in Pin Builder. Now, FP. And as you can see, uh, I have completed a little bit more of the design. Now, I had done an, uh, a new video, I'd done a video of this uh, yesterday. Uh, but in reviewing it today, I realized that OBS was just completely and totally mangling it. 
uh, I guess my settings dropped. I, I tried to get it to record a better quality picture. And, uh, you know, OBS just said, nope, nope, sorry, not going to do it. So, well, anyway, the video was completely and totally foobarred up. So I've uh, reset my OBS. I've done a little bit of investigating. I am trying to record in a slightly higher format. Uh, this is 4K monitor, and I have it so that it compresses the image. Um, but uh, I had it before at 1080p, but now I'm going to try 1440p. So because uh, the big thing is, as this is in all intents and purposes, a CAD program for the editor, computer-aided design, um, it doesn't really translate very well with compression. Uh, video games, perfectly fine. You probably wouldn't even notice much of a difference. But with stuff like this, where straight lines and everything else are really badly needed, uh, yeah, you can notice the difference. And I've noticed that uh, the editor gets very, very fuzzy. I've also changed some video settings in here too as well. Uh, so hopefully we have a little bit clearer picture of the actual uh, editor itself. So where should we start? Well, as you can see, I've been still making changes. Uh, this is a little bit wrong because as you can see, I'm just moving around stuff. I may actually just make this pointed straight down, uh, just like the original game. Uh, this is the trade-off for what I want to do, which I am not showing you at the moment, but it's sort of halfway complete, but I'll show it in the next episode. Uh, I, I think maybe just pointing straight down, just like the original, uh, is, is just going to work a little bit better. As you can see, it, it's there anyway. Why don't I just do that right now, huh? Rotation is set to 8. It's now 0. And... Uh, Let's reselect that a little bit because it is future pinball. It is over 15 years old. And let's just move it with the arrow keys. And yes, this is going to be a very bit. Uh, and pay attention to that because you're going to be hearing a lot about arrow keys the next episode. How about that for a hint? Um, okay, there we go. Like that. Yeah, that should do it. So we're going to uh, start taking uh, a look at this. I've sort of rearranged this and i got rid of the kicker up here and i moved everything up so i had a little bit more room because i kind of needed that for another shot that i have planned that is not in here yet uh but as you can see i've also rearranged the bumpers so that they look a little bit better uh, the targets have been slanted again to try and free up some room here especially in the horizontal but also the the shots here and uh in case you're wondering I think you should be able to see it, but as you can, see, if you can see the little red uh, outline of the ball size, I'm, I'm actually in really, really good shape. Now down here, yep, as you can see, this is being uh, changed just a little bit. Um, I could have done the saucer up, uh, the kicker up, up like here, but you know what? This just looks better, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it does. It just does better. And now we're coming into. Um, something that I decided, and I know uh, there are some people, especially from VP, are going to go, uh, Shiva, that looks real familiar. And I will say, yes, it is real familiar. You sh uh, if you're an old-timer VP, you know exactly what this, uh, where I got this from. Uh, at least I didn't have to steal it from an established arcade company. This is basically my own design. Uh, it just worked out better. It just worked out this way. And I originally was just going to have a shot and, and a kicker over here. And that was it. And then I thought, well, I have the room. Let's use it. So I decided to, to uh, extend it out. And then I said, ah, oh, well, you know what? I have a real good shot. Uh, I have a little oopsie lane here. So it just adds a little bit of an extra dim dimension to the, to the game. And then I thought, well, I really hate the fact that every time we we lock a ball and we shoot in that lane the ball just sort of hits hits the ball we lock and just goes clink and then just sort of lamely drops down so there's a little drop target there and that will pop up when the ball behind it is locked so you'll be able to at least score points or do anything that's uh that's already uh, lit in that area 
you'll be able to score that. You know, you know what I mean. So I just thought that that was a really, really good idea. And as I said, I had the room and it looked a lot better than just the targets and then the, just the lane shot up there. So why not? Right. And oh, there's going to be a drop target here. And there's also going to be a drop target here too as well. I think that's a very, very good idea to have a drop target pop up if there's a ball locked uh, in, in that saucer. So at least, you you know, continue to score. So what else is there? Well, oddly enough, this is a lot of rebuilding uh, since the last video. Um, I should mention that uh, I lost the original episode three recording because of OBS. I'm hoping this thing uh, works out a little bit better. But uh if it does, that is that's great because I really hate having to record this particular episode over and over again. And there is things that I have done since that first recording, so uh, watch out for that one. Um, as you can see, I've been setting up things for certain shots, and and I think basically the finishing thing uh, for the. The one thing that this table kind of really, really needs, it needs something really, really, truly spectacular. Uh, something that really sells the machine uh, to a person, whether, it, whether they're buying a program or just want a, a pinball table to play. You know, um, we will discuss that in greater detail uh, probably the next episode when you see it. In the meanwhile, we're going to try something uh, a little as an experiment to see uh, if, I've, I've done a compromise with OBS. OBS does show the table view, but only basically as a screenshot. But I figured out how it's doing that at the very least. And as I said before, in a couple, uh, I'll spend a couple of hours and see if I could get it to actually record video. But it does allow you to be able to see things. So let's just try it out and see if this is going to work. Now, as you're seeing, you're seeing a completely, well, basically a screenshot. Now, for some reason, my mouse focus isn't isn't great on this. Okay, see, uh, as you can see, it was on, you know, my mouse focus was on the table. It works fine. You just don't see it. But if I take the mouse off and click on, on my other monitor, there we go. And as you can, and while the mouse focus is on the second monitor, you can see the flashing lights. But as soon as I move the cursor over, then guess what? Right? So this is the F1 view. Now I'm going to switch it to F2. I'm going to move my mouse over. Come on, come on. You can do it, Funky. Nope. No, I guess not. Oh, geez. I still haven't got this thing. I'm just trying to trick the damn thing. But anyway, uh, as you can see from the F run view, well, it works about 33% of the time. How about that? Yeah, I know. It's just not going to do it. Uh, but as you can see, it's not too bad. It's, it looks good. Anyway, wow. And of course, it's giving me my mouse focus back. Yay. Uh, pin builder, there's a couple, there was some very, very small features and that are actually quite nice that I do wish was in future pinball, like the ability to be able to see your cursor um, when you're in game mode. I think it's the U key. Uh, that's actually quite nice. Yeah. So you're seeing what I'm up to here. Uh, you can see it's getting a little bit more complete. Uh, I believe I've already explained everything about why these lines are here. And as you can see, I've got lines for spacers. And uh, with episode four, we're going to be showing you a couple of things that are not in here yet. I think that's about the best way to put it. And <laughs> just to be honest, I don't know if it's really going to work 100% yet. Um, so if it's a quite a while before you see the next video it's because it didn't work out and I got to come up with something uh, else or else I'm just going to look stupid saying that it's really truly spectacular so you, you understand what I mean right but um, it seems to work all right the problem with it is absolutely no way that pin builder is going to be able to do it but you know we'll worry about that later in the meanwhile well as you can see the game is taking shape we've got the bones of the game in place to a certain extent 
Uh, we're starting, uh, we're going to um, add some muscle. We're going to add a, a, another bone. At the moment, uh, this game literally uh, is just a torso and a head and a couple of arms, but it doesn't have legs yet. So I'll be doing the legs next video. Uh, then we're going to wrap some stuff around it. Uh, we're going to add some lights. We're going to probably put some plastics on it. Maybe, maybe not. And uh, then we should have a table that uh, we can import into Pin Builder and we can uh, try and build it. In the meanwhile, um, I'm a little bummed out because the hockey game is not being televised uh, in my area. So I'm a very, very, very bummed out because it's the only, it's Edmonton, Dallas. It's the only Canadian team left. They really should make some arrangements to have that game being shown. I know it's being played in the States. I really don't think that that's much of an excuse. So God knows why we're not able to watch the game. I have no idea. So I'm a bit bummed out. But then on the other hand, at least I have time to work on things with this particular game. So uh, that's what I'll be doing instead. Uh, in the meanwhile, it's, love it's been an absolutely lovely day here. I hope it's just as nice over where you are. I hope you're all doing great. And we will talk to you in the next video. Uh, bye for now.